Hello. Just me. How are you? This video has been um, requested and a long time coming, and I finally am getting to it. So, first of all, we'll start with the supplies that we need. We need a project display board, which is one of these trifold thingajiggies that the lovely kiddos like to use for their science fair projects. I purchased this one at Dollar Tree. I know, Dollar Tree has everything nowadays. And then I have my um, cutting mat and a knife, and then I have my duct tape of choice. Now I'm using three colors. Um, you really don't need that. I'm just making it more um, fancy, so to speak, just because that's my creativity, I guess. Okay, so this is what we're doing. We are covering the project board. You can attach little um, hook and loop with straps of duct tape. And then you store your paintings nice and neat and flat. And that is how I prefer to have my painting stored. So as you can see, this holds a ton. I have not counted. I will not count. We're not going there. This holds a lot of paintings. And let me tell you, this thing is heavy. So um, as you can see, my little attempt at creating a pocket in the middle did not work. But these are slid underneath my dresser. And I suggest storing them like this um, to keep your paintings flat. Because if you stand it up, Unless you are, unless you have a very um, tight spot to stand it up in, um, it's going to warp. So as you can see, I have two of these. This is my second one. And you see, I got a little bit fancier with the duct tape application on this one. And as far as this one goes, as you can see, it's all one plaid design. And then I used cute little foxes and trees as my accessory tape. So this is what we're going to be making today. If you have not seen my previous video where I debuted these beauties, I'll show you what's in here too. There's even more in this one. I'm pretty sure this one, and they weigh a lot. Plus this is something you don't want to be carrying around a lot because it is cardboard and it bends easily. But as you can see, there are a ton in here as well. Ooh, that one bit. That is not good. It slid up on me. Let's push this back down. Can't have a bit. Canvas. Bad, bad, bad. No bueno. Okay. And then these on this side are my completed pieces that I do not have an idea for framing it. And again, you can see I attempted at a pocket in the middle, um, which we will discuss that and I will show you how to create it. If you can come up with a better idea, please let me know. So let's get going on this. And like I said, you do not have to do the little fastener thingy. I just thought it was cute and um, an extra little touch for the decorative purposes Okay, so first thing you need to do after you get your board is decide which tapes you're going to use. So I have had this tape sitting around for a really long time, and as you can see, I've not done a single thing with it. There was a while, a long time ago, when I was making duct tape wallets. So cool. They actually are very, very nice to use because I carried several and they last for quite a while. So, anyway, cat hair on my board. And there's a cat standing on my board. If you could see right here, the little white turkey butt is standing on the boards. You want to come say hi? You haven't said hi in a while. Come here. Oh, nope, she says nope. She's camera shy. <laughs> Plus, she probably, there she is. Now you can see her. <laughs> You're on camera anyway. 
turkey butt. That's Elsa. She is our deaf cat, and she is a uh, she's a troublemaker. All right, so moving on, we will get started. And what I did to get started was I took the tape, and you're gonna have to excuse that sound. It's awful. Okay, so you get it long enough for your needs. And what I did, make sure you can see what I'm doing here. I have it extending the edge on this side by about half an inch. And then I have, whoops, that's not enough. And then about a quarter of an inch across the top, give or take, not an exact measurement, but you want to be able to fold over the top to secure and hide that rough cardboard edge. So let me get that place because apparently I can't talk and do this at the same time. Okay. All right, so as you can see, I have a little bit of a flap here. I have a flap here, and I'm also gonna cut a flap on this side. The main purpose of this is to cover that rough cardboard edge to make this a little bit more sturdy and longer lasting. Now, you don't have to be this precise, but if you've been here a while, you'll know that I um, tend to be a little OCD. So what I will do, and actually that is really crooked and you don't want to pick up the tape too much because it will pull up the cardboard and then the tape won't be sticky anymore so back to what I was saying on the corner here and you can't see what I'm doing let me get back down here so I'm going to go right at the corner of the cardboard and I'm just going to cut a slice diagonally Cut a slice diagonally. Now the purpose of that is to be able to wrap this piece under like so. And then we are going to fold this piece down and you bring, see how you've got that little tail right there? You're just gonna bring that around to the top. That covers your corner nice and secure. Let's see if we can do it again at this side where you can see a little bit better. This is a really, the reason, the main reason I have not done this tutorial yet is because this is a big and bulky project and it's hard to walk you through it. So what I'm doing is I'm, <clears throat> I found my corner and I'm just cutting a diagonal cut so I can then fold this corner piece or the side piece and I have a bit right here that's going to cover that. I need to cut that off because we need that to be a secure if I can get it just started then I can tear it. Alright. And now we're going to fold all of this down across the top. And forgive me for not showing you. I will show you once it's finished. I just want to be able to get it nice and smooth with as minimal wrinkling as possible. Okay. So our first piece is in place. Let me flip this around and I will show you what the back side looks like. Let me lift this up. You're seeing less than her. Yeah. Hang on a second. Let's readjust. See a little bit more of me and less of the cutting mat, which might help me. Hello. How are you? Okay. So here is the first strip in place. And you can see we have the side 
covered, the corners covered. Let's see if we can get this where you can see, not really. Okay, so what we do next is continue on in that fashion. Now, if you're like me and you want to be extra creative, go for it. This is all, this is your project. Do what you like. I'm going to put a few more strips. And this, unfortunately, is not a tape that you can line up, which I don't like. It's probably why I haven't used it yet, because I'm really big into lining up my duct tape patterns, which if you look really close at my plaid, oops, well, that didn't work out very well, did it? If you look really close at my plaid portfolio, you will see that um, the plaid lines up. We won't talk about how long that took, but it looks really awesome. Okay. So we'll do a few rows like so. And I don't think it really matters if you do um, your strips from top to bottom or side to side like I'm doing. I feel like it takes probably the same amount of tape. I'm not sure exactly because I'm not going to take the time to measure that out. Um, but I'm really happy with this design. Other, the only thing I wish I could figure out is how to get that pocket to be more secure in the middle. And, um, oh, I had discussed that. I had said we were going to discuss that. And I should have done that before I started this. Um, if you want to try to create a pocket in the middle, because I've got two stacks of paintings, um, if you keep them, the portfolio flat, they're not going to slide back and forth. Um, if you don't have all that many paintings, you could just put them in one stack going this way instead of two stacks going this way. So I hope that makes sense. But what I did was I cut this cardboard in the middle um, and took out, yeah, about half an inch or so. I cut a half an inch or so out and removed that cardboard. So then I had a space in between that I kind of put duct tape down and attempted to stick it. It was a fail. But anyway, I'm not going to waste the time doing that on this one because I know it doesn't work. So back to taping. I think what I will do is I will um, come back to you in a bit um, so you don't have to sit here and watch me put duct tape all over this because it's going to take a little while all right so i will see you at the next step just continue to cover your flaps i covered the back also you do not have to but i feel like it adds some durability to the piece so if you want to do that, do that. And I'll see you back at the next step. Okay, so I've gotten, uh oh, whoops, <laughs> back to the table. So I've gotten to the final piece on the bottom. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how you should go about um, wrapping that. If you do, well, you need to, because this will help reinforce the fold. Um, so you need to have tape to fold over onto the back. So in order to get your corner nice and neat, I think you'll be able to see it. This is what I was doing on the, the top corner that you really couldn't see. So I think you'll be able to see it better doing this way. So what I do, try to keep my hand out of the way here. I go from the corner diagonally out your tape does not have to be square it does not matter so you can see there there is an angled cut okay so let me flip around and do that again 
So here at the corner, diagonally out. Now, ugh, again, when you fold this piece over, you're going to have all that overhang. So what you then need to do, see how awkward this is? Oh, look, there's Anna checking out cat food that the other two ate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take from that corner again and come straight out whoops, towards me. That alleviates this excess that was going to interfere with the adhesive on that side. Okay, so let me do that again in case you don't, in case that didn't make any sense. All right, so we have this corner piece that's sticking up. When you fold it over, it's going to interfere with the adhesive. So again, go from the corner that you're folding straight back. No diagonal this time, straight. So you're actually cutting a triangle. You're cutting a triangle out of the tape. I hope this makes sense trying to be as precise as possible without being too um, elementary. So now the other thing you have to remember, do not fold your tape all the way over. You need to have your piece open, but again, at the same time, you need to fold this up first. So carefully pull it nice and tight. Do not let these two pieces touch. Because trust me, getting duct tape apart is not fun. Once it sticks to itself, it likes to stay. All right, so you've got this secured. Now you're going to open your flap and lay it flat. And now you're going to bring up each of your little pieces. Try not to get your own hair stuck in there. So let's see. Okay, you can see this. So you're going to bring this straight up and this straight up. So that allows your flap to move freely and you don't have to worry about any kinks or creases. Plus you can also run your hand along this way and make sure that this is nice and secured. Okay, so now you're going to continue applying your tape how you like. Make sure that you overlap this bottom piece well. This will also help secure that fold. Duct tape is strong, but it's not, it's not that strong. So let me show you what I mean. You don't want it to overlap onto the front, but you want it to cover the majority of the tape. So again, you're going to overhang half an inch or so. And then you can see here, I am literally leaving quarter of an inch. Uh, you can see there. So there's the corner fold and then there's the, the edge of the new tape. So about a quarter of an inch. That way it's overlapped nice and tight and your seam should not pop open. Okay, so I will leave you to continue this process and I'll see you at the next step. The thing to remember is uh, make sure you open your flap before you fold your corner pieces over, because your edge pieces, because I just almost adhered it. So you don't wanna attach the fold overs this way. Make sure you're attaching your fold over in here. I made it to, I covered the back and I didn't have as much of my tan. I was hoping for equal striping right here, but I don't know, it still looks cool. So I'm getting ready to go over that final corner again. So I just wanted to show you again on camera um, what I did because if you're not used to doing stuff like this, it may not register what I'm saying. So you make a straight cut. Um, 
parallel with your fold on your cardboard. Then you make a diagonal cut away from the cardboard starting at the corner. And you remove that little triangle. So you can see there, there's a triangle missing of tape, okay? So that, and I just use the inside of my roll for little pieces. I, that's just something I've always done. I don't think it really matters, does it? Just a little tip I always do. It keeps you from having little duct tape pieces scattered everywhere. So again, on the other side, we're going from the corner, and it doesn't matter which um, order you do this in, because either way, you're gonna have two cuts and you're removing a little triangle. So diagonal from the corner out, parallel from the corner out and remove a little chunk of tape there. Now you will carefully fold up your overlap that you have left to secure that crease. Then you're gonna open up the flap and you're going to fold both pieces in nice and tight to cover up that raw edge. So we'll flip this around and do that again. So we come up and again up. And then you can run your fingers along that crease just to help secure that tape. And again, like this, okay? So now you're ready to go from this flat down, covering as you go. Now, this is what your inside will look like, and we will remedy that situation before we're finished. So continue on, I'll see you back in a bit. I'm on my final corner, and I wanted to do it one more time, just to make it so super clear for anyone that might be confused. So we're going from the corner, diagonally out on our tape, from the corner, parallel to the end of the tape, removing a little chunk, okay? Stick that in there. And I had um, folded this stuff over, or I had kind of done a little bit backwards on this, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order you do stuff. It still works out. So let me flip this around, do it one last time. Maybe, why is this even more awkward right now? <laughs> Get the chair out of the way. Ugh. Push the chair out of my way. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so again, we are going parallel corner edge of tape. Ugh. Top cor top that top piece corner diagonal removing chunk discarding said chunk so now we will fold over our edge pieces like so and then we can fold over our ceiling edge like this and just take that little triangle that's ex extending and just fold it to the front okay so again finishing this little bit up taking that extended triangle folding it to the front okay so we have our entire board how pretty oh I really like the tape it's really pretty and then here is the back which I initially did it this way but I think it will end up being this way so that is the back this is the front you have two flaps that open up now to address this uneven messiness um, you want to make sure you have enough of your tape for both sides Again, you don't have to use the same tape on both sides. I just am going to because I'm pretty sure I have enough 
of this one, and I know I don't have enough of this one. So what we do in this situation, get this out of the way, and I have too much stuff. I have my snack. I have my Reese's Pieces. I had to buy myself some Reese's Pieces. So I have my snack. I have my tea. I have my remotes for watching this television show while I'm working. That there. Okay. A little bit more room. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's where it differs from the front. You do not want to overlap onto your front piece unless it's the same tape. Because um, it will show drastically and it will not look as pretty. So what I do is I just start about an eighth of an inch from the top. Okay. So we will just line this up and you don't have to be right up to the edge. Like I said, like an eighth of an inch is plenty. And you're just going to go down. It's not straight. And trust me, you want to get this as straight as you can because it will go cockeyed quick. So take your time. Go slow with it. When you get to your crease, push it down a little bit extra. Continue flattening. We can close this up to make a little bit more room. Okay, and again, continue to slowly flatten and keep it straight. Smush in that extra little bit for the crease. And now I will cut my end and get it started here. That. Now what I did there to keep my ends from folding in on themselves is I stabbed the tape in the center and went out and then went back to the center and went out this way. That keeps the edges of your duct tape from like folding in on themselves and creasing. Because if you're not used to working with duct tape, it can be an unforgiving beast. So there is that nice and neat looking. And then we will repeat over here. Okay, so. Come on, little tapey tape. Don't be folding on me. So again, about a quarter of an inch from the edge at the top and along the side. Extra pressure Ooh. on the creases. And I really hope you all will let me know if you make one of these and if my instructions are clear. <sighs> Tragedy has happened. Ran out of my color. So I have to go back to this. So we'll just... <sighs> really? That's not even enough. All right. Well, you know what? This will be the interior pocket. And I'm going to go ahead to find myself another... Um, roll of tape so we can finish up. So I will be back in a minute with another roll of tape. Okay, 20 minutes later, found all of these empty rolls. Had to reorganize all of my duct tape. And the only thing that's even halfway suitable is this Paris theme tape. So we're gonna have to make it work. Because I'm not going out. Because the weather is, well, looks like it's drying up a little bit, but we had a horrendous, horrendous weather today. So I'm not going out just to buy a roll of duct tape that will match. 
because going to Joanne's is dangerous. All right, so that little six inch strip, bad tape, bad, bad tape, so mad, so perfect. <sighs> okay, so clearly these were not two brand new rolls of tape like I thought they were um, because the other things I made, I had two brand new rolls of tape and I had just enough. So here we have our completed portfolio. There we go. I have a cat playing with a rock. Okay, so now the, the kind of tricky part, what did I decide? This is the bottom. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to create your sides. Let me grab remember how heavy these things are Ugh. and you can see it does bend when you have that middle so I'm curious to see if it will still bend since I didn't cut the center out um, and you can see here how much I cut it's probably probably half an inch and then I just kind of tapered a little bit closer to where it's just like a very small amount on that side so here is how I where I created the pocket you have to get a little um, creative, I guess you could say, when it comes to this. And you will have this showing on this side. I tried doing it to where it was hidden. It just doesn't work. Oh, I'm really so bummed that I'm out of this tape. I said I wasn't going to the store. This is really going to bug me because let's take a peek. It's the same color background wise. Oh man, you know what? We're going to have to postpone this because that is really going to bug me that it doesn't match. Now watch, I won't be able to find this tape. Yeah. To be continued. <sighs> I'm back. Found this at Joanne's. My mind just like, Ooh. and I got lucky. Cause of clearance. Ta-da! So, it's not a perfect match. It's pretty darn close. And it will do for the purpose of this project. Because, of course, they didn't have either one of these patterns. So I'm really happy because I was going to get another roll of this. But I really didn't want another roll of that because it's, like, a huge roll. It's not like the normal, like, cute little rolls. Well, it's a roll like this. It's huge. There's a lot of tape on there. So I was happy when I went to the clearance section and I found this. So... Now we can resume, and I decided this was the bottom, this would be the top. So now we have to move on to constructing our pocket. And the way this naturally lays is what I'm going for as far as um, creating my pocket. So as you can see, it is really not wide enough. Well, it's just wide enough. So I need a little bit of an overlap on the top and on the bottom, and then not as much down here. So you got to do a little bit of engineering. And let's see if I can remember how I did it the first two times. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my board this way. And I am going to line a piece of tape on my cutting mat the length that I want it to be. Now, I need to have a little bit overlap this side and a little bit to overlap this side to tuck under. So, what I have done is I have placed a piece of tape 
with approximately an inch overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then I'm going to overlap about half for extra strength. A second piece, like so. And that's pretty. Ugh, oh, I hate the duct tape strings. The worst. Slimy, sticky. Ooh. Okay, I have a story for you. On my way home, I was sitting at a traffic light, and I noticed a Mustang sitting across the you know, I'm sitting here at the intersection over here at this intersection coming towards me. There's a Mustang. Well, I'm a Mustang fan. I love them. They are my favorite car. I'm straightening this up because... I have it laid out crooked, so I can't get it lined up to be overlapped straight. Anyway, so I'm sitting at this light, and I look over, and there is a beautiful Mustang in this pale blue color that I wanted years and years ago. So, of course, it caught my eye because that was the color I wanted to get, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking over this car. It's in really good condition for being, you know, 20-something-year-old car. And I notice... There's something like dangling from the front grill. So I'm like, oh, they ran over a stick. It's been really nasty weather today. There's tree debris everywhere, so they ran over a stick. So as my light turns green and I'm going through the intersection, I look over again at said Mustang with what I thought was a stick. No stick. It was us. It was a snake. For real. No joke. A snake hanging from the grill, and it was like that far, like laying like on the road, like laying on the road. <sighs> mm. Gives me the willies thinking about it. If I ever thought there was a snake in my vehicle, oh my gosh, flip out. So, of course, I'm like flipping out. So, I have to Google the snake because I got a pretty good look at it. So, it turns out it's just a rat snake. But still, ugh. it had to have been, I don't know, four or five feet long for it to be hanging from the engine and like dangling on the road, like laying on the road. Oh, man. My mom's like, did you tell the driver? Like, how am I going to tell the driver? I'm not going to turn around and like chase him down the road and be like, yeah, you got a snake hanging from I'm crazy. I'm not that crazy. Okay, moving on. That's my horrifying story. <laughs> Okay, get off of me, tape. So we have our piece. This is two pieces of tape overlapped by approximately half an inch. Approximately, it doesn't have So now comes the tricky part, which I need to get a pencil or a pen for. All right, clean up the space a little bit here. So for the sake of your eyes, um, I grabbed a Sharpie. Because this, now this is all made up out of my head. So um, there could be a better way to do this. I don't know. This is how I'm doing it. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do, so technical, we are going to take the board and stand it up or this way so you can see what I'm talking about here. So you're going to, and what you can do to make it a little bit easier on yourself is line it up straight across the back. So here I'll show you what I'm talking about. So on the side, that will be your back. See how you have an even amount of tape right here. So on the front side is where you're going to mark your V. So you can't have it open that high. So I'm just going to manipulate and let me stick that because I cannot cannot see what I'm doing okay so I'm going to manipulate my board to where it's straight on the back and then we have enough overhang here to fold over okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a guide along here whoops Okay.
I hear a cat tearing something up. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler just to make it easier on myself. And I'm going to give myself a quarter of an inch or so from the overhang. And I'm doing it this way so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the ruler is my cutting guide, and I'm doing this left-handed, so I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. Let's see if I did it. Ugh. Peel up, peel up. All right. Now, we do not want black showing on our project. Well, not on this. So I'm just going to use alcohol and clean off the Sharpie. Okay. I don't need adhesive, but that's all right. That's not that big a deal. It's going to get a little bit of dirty on it anyway. So, all right. So there we have our side pocket. Now, the other thing that has to happen, which I hope I haven't lost you yet, is you have to only have sticky showing where you're attaching it to the project board. So this is where this piece comes in handy. You are going to turn this piece over so the sticky is exposed. And then you are going to carefully put this piece on top of it. Now, let me warn you, once these two pieces touch sticky to sticky, good luck getting them apart. So you want to be very precise before you place and remember that you need to have, actually let's cut a little bit of this off. Um, you need to be able to have enough at the top and the bottom to overlap to adhere your pocket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball where I want it. Okay, so you see there, maybe, there we go. Okay, and now I'm going to, because remember, it needs to be the length of our folded over. So let me show you here quickly, maybe. <laughs> I line this up. You can see, hopefully, there we go. So here's our flap. So I need to add just a little bit of tape to this top section. To finish our pocket. So I will just take a small bit. And I'm just eyeballing this because, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be, you know, all together, you know, precise and all that fun stuff. So now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay this down colored side to the sticky side so I can kind of see and make sure that the sizing is good, which it is. So I am going to go ahead and place that down. Okay, so there we have the interior of our pocket. Now I need to do this a second time. So I'm going to set that aside. Not too far aside though, because I want to use it for measuring. Okay, so let me put this down. Now remember, we had two pieces overlapped by approximately half an inch. And that's the good thing about this cutting mat, it is has a grid on it 
so you can measure things a lot easier. This is a We Are Memory Keepers brand. If you are familiar with any kind of scrapbooking, you'll know that that is a very good paper crafting and scrapbooking company. They do awesome, awesome things. And they actually just, if you have seen um, the epoxy tumblers where they're like covered in glitter and oh, they're gorgeous. We Are Memory Keepers is making crappy, crappy cat fight. I mean, um, anyway, We Are Memory Keepers is making a spinning tool for that. They're just the coolest. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I have my initial piece here. So I'm going to line it up on my second piece. And let's do it this way. So my hand is not blocking your vision. Okay, so I will take and just cut like I did the first time. I'm just using my first one as a guide so my pockets will match. And then we take this, pick this up, and then we are going to Trim this off and then place this in the center of our tape. And again, I want it to be somewhat the same. And now this one worked out a little bit better. I, I had my tape not quite as, it's not as overlapped as this piece is, so I don't need to add um, very much to the top. So let's double check this placement. No, oh, actually, I think I'll be good. I don't think I need to add any of this to the top. So let me line this up and see. Sorry, if I'm kind of like talking to myself, I apologize. I'm not used to doing this for an audience. Okay. Nope. That's going to work out pretty good. Okay, so now comes the fun part. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in place. And as you can see, it is lined up along there. And it will end up being fairly straight there. So next, what I want to do is I'm going to hold open what is will become the pocket. And I am going to place the tape along tell you this is a little tricky and it's a little tedious and it will probably wrinkle on you but this is what will keep your paintings from sliding out all over the place and this is also when I really wish I had more of my main tape because then I could hide this scene, but I just need to be a little bit more careful. Okay. Now, what I forgot to do is notch. Whew, luckily, it wasn't um, stuck. So what I need to do is I need to cut parallel along that bottom crease. And then cut up. So we only have one flap. Let's see if I can show this. Okay, so we only have one flap to go under. And then you're going to have this little tail. And I'm going to trim that off with my knife. Because this is already, it already has a, um, you know, the corner is already protected with the first layer of tape. So this isn't, this is really just to seal in the bottom of your corner, not really for, um, you know, securing the tape to itself. Okay. So there we have this in place. 
now we have to deal with this top section. Now the way I did it on mine was I just folded under. Um, what am I trying to say here? Okay, to make us to make my brain just kind of stopped for a second. So it's not raw duct tape. So what I want to do is I want to cut straight down. And this is really tricky. If you're using a knife, be extra, extra careful. So I'm just cutting a straight line. And again, I'm doing that half down the middle, halfway one, one way, half the other. And I'm going to take the first, let's see if I can show you here. Okay, so you can see there I've, where I've cut. So this piece is going to get folded down onto the cardboard. So that goes down. And then I'm going to cut another straight line along the cardboard. Ugh. I really hope I haven't lost y'all because this is really complicated, kind of. Okay, and then I'm just going to fold the raw edge down like this. So you can kind of see there is no exposed sticky anywhere in the pocket. See, I can go all the way down and run this all the way down. It does not stick at all. There is no sticky exposed because the only place that is touching cardboard is the sticky. We have this covering that. So now we get to repeat that process on the other side and then we will have a better look at what we've created. At least I hope what we have created. I hope I am giving you enough information that you can do this yourself. All right, so I'm lining up again the edge of the cardboard with the edge of the sticky. And let me go ahead and cut before I attach here. And it's just a tiny little edge there, so I'm just using my knife to get it started up there. Okay, and now we need to cut the, um, the bottom corner. So again, I want the top. This is the front. Cat getting in trouble with this time, really getting in trouble. There's stuff flying off my nightstand that I can see right now. I forgot I brought in a piece of catnip from the garden and uh, I laid it on my nightstand. <laughs> so I had to go save it for everything on my nightstand. It ended up on the floor. So Emily and I have a, we planted a raised garden and we had to put some catnip in it for our kitties. So. I brought some in to see what they would do with fresh catnip because they are used to um, dried catnip. So I was I found out Elsa likes it. Okay, let me lay this down. This is not. It seems like it would be easier to have it standing up, but it's really not. All right, so you can see here. I'm just going to go along and make sure that there is no sticky exposed and then fold over, fold under I should say. All right, so there's our pocket ready for our paintings. Now if what I need to do to make this uh, more matchy matchy is I'm, I'm going to use the peach next to create our straps. Now that is done in a very similar fashion to what we just did with the pocket. You need to decide how long you want your strap to be. And I'm going to make mine a little bit longer 
um, because once they get full, <laughs> your strap needs to be a little bit longer to, um, so everything will stay fastened. Because mine, my original ones, my straps, my straps are a little um, on the short side. So now that the pocket is full, they don't want to stay closed. So that is an improvement I'm making on this. Now, there's two things that you can do, and I wish I had done this, but um, I'm going to show you two ways. Since I'm making two straps, you'll get to see two ways that you can do this. Now, I talked about the raw edge on this, which is why I folded down um, the raw edge so it has more of a, a finished look to it. So what we're going to do on this this, now, mind you, this is the strap that we're going to use with hook and loop tape. So we're going to offset these pieces. Like this. So we have sticky here. And we have sticky here. Then what we're going to do is fold this sticky over and fold this sticky piece over. So we have a finished edge. So the only raw edge, so to speak of, is on this side, which you really could fold over the edges too, but that's just a little bit, a little bit much. And I didn't have my starting piece straight, so I just have a little bit to cut off here, which is really tricky when it's a microscopic piece. Okay, so the next way that I'm going to show you on how, to, <coughs> excuse me, on how to do your strap is pretty simple. It's just a piece that's twice as long. So you have this here and then you need to have this here. So it's going to go all the way down and then just a little bit more. So let's move this up. Ooh. So it covers the cutting mat. And I'm just lining this up with my grid so I can cut straight across and it will actually be straight. So here we have this and this and then a little bit extra. So I'm going to cut right here. Excuse me, for the nose itchy, itchy, itchy. So now you're going to turn it over. And you want to make sure you have the same length strap and then you are going to fold it. This is why I didn't do it this way the first time because it is it's tricky this way. So you want to fold right here. So just slowly walk it down. like so. And then you have one piece of sticky left. So you end up with two um, finished edges and only one folded, um, folded over. So on this strap it's easier but you have one, you have a folded over um, seam on both sides. Whereas on this one where it's folded in half you only have the seam on one side and that could be the side that's down. So there's your two options. Folding in half is just a little bit trickier. It takes a few more minutes. It really doesn't take that much longer. It just takes a few more minutes. Um, I forgot my hook and loop tape. All right, so I went and got my hook and loop dots. <gasps> Whoops. <laughs> just blew out of the package. So you can see here, they're just little dots, 
and you have one side that is the hook, one side is the loop, so they stick together. So what I'm going to do, and you also you want to remember that you want this to be up, not flat, when you attach your straps. So I am going to use my glue gun, which I probably need to come around before I burn myself. Oh, stepped on the cat's rock. You ever heard of a cat playing with a rock? I mean, like for real, it's so funny. Okay, so you can't see what I'm doing, but I am applying hot glue to the strap, as you can see there. And then I am going to place that on the project. And something you need to remember too is um, duct tape will melt. So keep that in mind. It melts and it shrinks. So you don't want to get your glue too hot or use a low temp glue gun if you have one, have access to a low temp other than high temp. All right, so here is the other strap and I'm just eyeballing where I'm putting it, making it somewhat even. And I'm using the, um, Whew. I'm using the strip of tape, the line here, where you can't see. So the, the line of tape that runs here is what I'm using for placement. Okay, so we've got the strap in place. Now all we have to do is attach, and again, remember you want your straps to be kind of high. So I put one end on this strap and this end like so, and then just pull it down so it lines up that way. And again, repeat, putting one sticky side there and attaching the other side like so, pull up, and press down. Now, just another little finishing touch. I have these buttons. I've had these sets. They kind of came with a set of ribbon and a button. I've had them for forever. That's what I used on my other ones. So I'm just going to attach buttons to the top. Again, with some more glue, hot glue. And I apologize for being off camera, but the way my outlets are set up, this is the only option for where I'm filming. Okay, so there is that. Okay. Now, one other thing I want to share with you before I sign off. Sorry, I forgot to uh, grab these so we can actually put them in and we can see how it works. So we we'll undo our straps and open, <laughs> except I'm too short. And now you can begin placing your paintings. And the way I put my paintings in is two piles like this. So I usually keep my completed ones all together, which these will actually go into the other um, one I have. Did I show you all this one? Isn't that cute? So cute. Just the little ladybugs. Also known as ladybirds. You might know why they're called ladybirds. And then the other side, I will have paintings like this. So let me pull this down. So you can see I have lots of room to add more paintings. I don't have to worry about them falling out the side and I don't have to worry about them sticking. So now all I do is push this down and we have a beautiful 
portfolio for our paintings. Isn't that cool? I hope you all like it. I really, I really am tickled with how they turn out. But I do have something to share with you before I sign off. Is I had um, start. I had shown this a long time ago, and I started working on it. And I have the first two panels completed, and they look pretty good. I still wish this was bigger, but what are you gonna do? So I've got HA down, and from a distance, it, it looks good. I mean, you're gonna know. Plus, you got Harry's face real big and right there. So I am keeping these. Like I had, we had talked about this on my Facebook page. Um, I'm cutting them apart as I'm working on them because it is a five panel and it's really annoying to um, have that giant rolled up piece on one side and, and not, um, let me turn this over. So what I did was I just cut the piece of plastic that was covering these two panels and I just taped it together to make like a sleeve. So that's how they're being stored while I'm working on the other pieces. So before I sign off, um, I'm going to show you tape on the other side of my, uh, my, I thought it would be cool to have a kid who crafts. So she starts using her stuff. It's not so cool anymore. Okay. Anyway, back to the original plan. So when you have all of your empty duct tape holes, what I like to do is I either will paint the inside or I will carefully attach tape to the inside. Um, if it's the duck brand, it's usually easier to just put tape inside because it'll cover a little bit better. And I hot glue the two. So let's, for instance, we have the two that I used up today. So I will hot glue them together like this, and then I will coat the inside either with tape or with paint. In this case, I did tape. And then I also put a strip around here of tape just to hide where the hot glue likes to ooze out. And then I will cut a circle of cardstock this size, and I will hot glue it to the bottom. And it will make an awesome pen holder. It's a recycling project. So I, thanks to Emily, I have mac and cheese and polka dots. We have the ones I just used today. These were two that Emily had emptied and just left in the container. And then I will also be able to make a Christmas one with the lace and frosties. So that is another fun recycling project you can do. Um, please leave me some feedback. I know you're not going to be able to leave a comment um, below. Send me um, a message through Facebook, through email. Um, join our Facebook group. It will be in the description box so you guys can come in there. We can have a whole conversation about this. Uh, be gentle because, like I said, this was very challenging for me and it's not something I've ever done before. So if I missed anything, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask because I'll be more than happy to figure out what I did wrong and help you solve um, whatever, however I may have confused you, which I wouldn't put it past myself. I can tend to do that. So um, I will see you soon. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Um, yeah, that's that. There's Anna in the background snooping around. We got Anna. Say hi. <laughs> All right, I'll sign off. This has been a really long video. Oh, thanks. <laughs> he wants to play, and she doesn't want to play, so she has to yell at him and be rude. All right, so I can't wait to get your feedback on this project, and um, happy dining.